Namaste, thank you for pressing play and welcome. COVID-19, a virus that has invaded almost every nation in the world. Starting at the beginning of this year, this virus has crossed oceans and spread almost throughout all countries. Its invisible tentacles reaching into the lives of humanity, relentless in its hunger to infect victims as it unleashes itself upon the innocent. There is no weapon as yet which can be used to halt this invisible and silent enemy. So how do we respond? Well, we respond with a face mask and a change in our behavior. A face mask to cover our nose and our mouth. And of course, to maintain social distancing and also resist the urge to touch your eyes, nose and mouth. And of course, each other. Surely this seems to be a rather flimsy approach towards a formidable and dangerous enemy. The economies of most countries are bending under the strain of little or no economic activity. This is impacting on the many families who have lost employment and their income. Do we have a plan? Well, outside of a newly derived vaccine, there is probably no effective plan on the horizon as yet. But we do have a focus, and our focus should be to walk in the way of our Heavenly Father. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and 16, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. So from this, we have a direction. Go the way which is tried and can be trusted. This is the way of our Heavenly Father. We do not panic, and we do not allow bad news to weaken our faith. We are reminded that one is a majority with our Heavenly Father. So therefore, if we all stand together in agreement, we are strong. We walk away from bad news that discourages our souls. Moreover, we take great care not to discourage ourselves. So we must go the way of guarding our tongues. In the book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18, reckless words pierce, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. There is an old story from long, long ago. It is about a community of frogs. Once a year, they would gather together to hold a great competition on their annual race day. It was a very, very grueling and challenging race. This race tested the resolve of every frog that entered. No frog had ever won this race, and this seemed to make all the frogs more and more determined to be the first to finish this race. While the contestants were readying themselves to start, the rest of the frog community spread out along the grueling course of the race. This they did to cheer and encourage the frogs in their efforts. Well, the race started and the contestants took off and the community began to cheer them on. Then they noticed that there was a smaller frog struggling behind the rest of all of the frogs. The crowd started shouting to the smaller frog, Stop! Stop! 
you won't make it. But the smaller frog just kept going. As the race progressed, some of the frogs became tired and they gave up trying. But the smaller frog just kept on going, even though the crowds were getting more loud. They were shouting at him, give up, give up. As more of the frogs left the race, the smaller frog was still trying his very, very best, even though the crowds were now shouting at him more and more and urging him to give up. Stop, stop. You will not make it. No one has ever made it. The last few remaining frogs finally gave up and they left the race as well. But the small frog just kept on going. The crowds kept on shouting at him. Stop! You can't make it. No one has ever made it to the end. Not long after that, and in spite of all the discouraging words from the onlookers, the smaller frog crossed the winning line. The race officials came over and asked the frog, how did you manage to complete this race? Then another frog came over and said to the officials, he cannot answer your question. You see, this frog, he's deaf. Discouragement can be a very destructive force if we allow it. Confidence, on the other hand, is like a sense of knowing. In the book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that our heavenly Father, who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day our heavenly Father calls us home. There are few laws that tell us what we can do. Most of our laws tell us what we cannot do. Do not walk on the grass. Do not exceed 35 miles per hour. Do not cross this barrier line. Do not enter here. Do not go to work. Stay at home. And the list goes on and on. We are living in a time where COVID-19 is shaping laws and lifestyles that we never would have believed possible. In times of uncertainty, emotions run wild and bad decisions can be disastrous, more so if our leadership appears to be in disarray, not able to speak with one voice, shaky ground at best. Reality, though, is not shaken. It never changes. It knocks at your door and whatever it is, that's what it is. It is what you do with reality that is important. Stay focused, resist fear, and know that there is a way. Ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. The second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Our Father has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Two world wars brought times of sadness and deep loss, but our country and nation is still here, forging ahead as never before. Time rolls on by looking for the dawning of a new day where the sun can shower us with its light and warmth. In Job chapter 23, verse 10, when we are tried, we will come forth as gold. It takes fire and heat to refine gold. But when it's done, it produces not only value, but value that is precious. The book of Romans we read, who shall separate us from the love of our heavenly Father? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. 
our Heavenly Father will never let go of us. He loves us. And this is a reality that will never, ever change. In the book of Romans, we read, What shall we say when concerning these things? If our Heavenly Father is for us, who can be against us? If our Heavenly Father were to give us some advice for these times, what do you think it might be? Perhaps be still and know that I am your God. Father, bless us. Bring us into one mind and one heart with you. Teach us the truth, no matter the cost. Show us the truth, no matter the cost. Namaste, each and every one of you. Peace be with you.